Chris, thanks very much indeed for talking to us. I mean, 89% slump in profits. I mean, you said earlier today that these conditions were much more worse than you anticipated. From municipal services to load shedding, they weighed heavy on these results, didn't they? Good day, Devon. Yes, absolutely. Uh, if you take that total cost, as mentioned, of 741 million, a big part of that was spent on additional feed. And if we recall that that raw material cost has peaked during this period, so maize and soya were almost at all-time highs. Now you can't process the bird. There's a backlog. You back them up onto the farms. They grow bigger, and now you have to feed them the most expensive feed in our history. So that's a massive cost directly linked to load shedding. And uh, the other cost contributing to that is obviously now you have to work additional shifts that were set aside for plant maintenance. Now, those additional shifts normally happen on Sundays, so you have to pay double wage. You now neglect your maintenance program a bit and you have more breakdowns. So a vicious uh, circle of negative circumstances there, all on the back of load shedding. And uh, that has decimated our profits. If we uh, maybe uh, didn't have the load shedding and you add up the 100 million profit we did make uh, to the 740, it would have added up to 850, which would have been most probably our best half year results in our history, all decimated by load shedding and also abnormal uh, water uh, breakages and disruptions at our plant. So you need water to process livestock. So a very sad situation. At the end of the day, it adds up to your cost of production. And unfortunately, that will flow through to the consumer eventually. During this period, we were not able to pass that cost on, not mm. the higher feed cost or the additional cost uh, on the back of load shedding. So we're currently selling poultry at a loss. We had a negative margin on poultry of 4.4%. That adds up to about 3 rand 20 a kilo that we need to add to current pricing just to break even. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we in a situation where we can say it is not production inefficiencies, but the lack of services that's actually driving food inflation currently and making meat uh, very in, uh, expensive to the end consumer. Yeah. And we are very sensitive to that. Hence I want to our, I wanna uh, talk about that if I can just come in there for right. a moment, Chris. I mean, what's government saying about that in terms of relief for you as a food producer? It's not brand new that you're bringing up these issues with power cuts, with municipal deficiencies that's, that's really having a staggering effect on your business. You've been talking to some government officials for some time. What, what, what's been the word there to give you some relief? Well, lately, absolutely nothing. We talk to uh, government at municipal le level, at uh, regional level or provincial level and on a national level and there's hardly anything forthcoming. Uh, there's always talks. We talk and meet with them, but there's no actions. And uh, there's also not the one or two actions that we do have. We hardly see any execution of that. The ongoing issue in Standerton with water and electricity has been uh, around for a long, long time. We were engaging with government at various levels. We also started legal uh, uh, processes there two, three years ago, but hardly any positive outcome. So at the end of the day, what we believe what government is telling us, and I'm talking about uh, uh, agriculture, trade and industries, and water affairs, is uh, business have to look after itself and become independent of these uh, uh, defunct municipalities and and uh, SOEs that mm. are supposed to deliver basic services to us. You Transnet mentioned... is another, another example. Transnet used to be a major player in, in, in the transport of raw materials across the country. It's now all done by road at an elevated cost, four times that of the Transnet cost. Yeah, you, you've mentioned the fact that you're taking a hit with your poultry prices, your chicken prices, where you are essentially making a loss. Yet on the other side of the equation, you've got inflation of chicken that's really going through the roof together with food inflation. At what point does chicken become completely unaffordable to people? 
Well, that's a point we will have to test. Up to now, we there were endeavors to move the price up, but we've seen that there's a ceiling. I think the consumer is uh, in, in a very uh, severe situation currently with a number of added inflationary costs to basic lifestyle. So uh, we can see if you try to move prices just to cover your costs, not, not to profiteer, just to cover costs, that there is a ceiling where people start to buy less or buy down into secondary products. So we currently at that level, so we have to sit it out and uh, get back to normality. And then uh, the outlook on raw materials is quite mm. positive. So we expect a bit of assistance from lower feed input cost from uh, the fourth quarter onwards in, in our company. Chris, has renewable energy or backup power been any sort of solution for you guys on these processing plants? I mean, what, what, what's happening on that front? Well, in the smaller operations like the feed mills and the uh, hatcheries and on farms, we are okay with, with, with alternative energy, solar, etc. But in the massive big abattoirs, you need electricity. You unfortunately cannot run that on solar and battery backup. Uh, we estimate that in the medium size abattoir, you will need 12 to 14 hectares of solar panels and half the size for battery backup. Mm. And then you hope the sun will shine. So that is not a solution for, for abattoirs. You need hardcore electricity. And if not that uh, diesel generation, which comes at a huge uh, price tag. You also have consumers who ordinarily would buy frozen chicken in bulk under normal circumstances, freeze that, but presumably they can't do that anymore because certainty is not there for their fridges or freezers to be powered. We've experienced that, so people would prefer smaller bags, and unfortunately at this point in time we have bigger birds because of load shedding. And it's very difficult to pack the uh, ordinary two kilogram IQF bag. So it, most of them go into five kilo bags, which move chicken selling prices to another pricing point, which is difficult for a household to pay 200 rand for chicken in a five kg bag. So there are difficulties. And uh, uh, I think the consumer is very wary of uh, no electricity uh, if you have a deep freeze and that you did buy expensive meat and it could go off. Yeah, Chris, before I let you go, your forecast in the coming months, uh, what's it looking like on the feed price side and on electricity? I suppose for the second one, no one really knows, but what are you forecasting? Well, those are two major input costs. On the feed side, I, there's a bit of a silver lining. We see international raw material prices coming off, local prices on Safex as well. We've had four very good maize crops, and we see prices coming off on maize and soya. Unfortunately, uh, the currency that is weakened against the U.S. dollar is, is not playing in our favor because raw material prices are priced on Chicago. And uh, so we, we, that's a secondary battle we have to fight, and that is to buy currency, and currently that's going north. Uh, from the... Um, electricity side or load shedding we we here talks about stage eight it's going to be very difficult and uh, we've got some plans in place just to get our production and our efficiencies back into the space where we want them by uh, the fourth quarter and hopefully our uh, systems production systems will be intact as what they used to be but now at a much higher cost because of your diesel bill mm -hmm. and running abattoirs with uh, diesel generated uh, electricity all right we'll leave it there astral ceo chris scutter thanks very much indeed uh, for talking to us all